No glasses, no voice. Boy, it's going to be a fun one this morning. I think, though, we should add it to our logo. Come to OBC. We'll kick you in the pants. <laughs> hey, that's great. Wonderful. I don't want to. I don't want to take a whole lot of time. Um, I think what I really wanted you to see um, this morning was Dave's heart. Did you see that? Um, Dave will tell you if you get a chance to meet with him and talk with him. And I know he heads out next Saturday, so he's he's going to be uh, back to see family, and then he's going back to to the field again. Uh, but just his heart and how God can get a hold of a heart and just transform you. Um, he wasn't spouting off with a whole bunch of people told him. He is walking the life of experiencing what God does. That's kind of where we are in our series this summer. We're looking at just getting that authenticity of, of getting it right and, and in step with what, what God is looking to do in your own individual lives. We read earlier, Doug read earlier for us from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and the whole theme of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 15, is about generosity. And I'm going to start by saying this. There are far more people in this world that want to be known as generous than people that actually want to be generous. Can I say that again? There's far more people in this world that want to be known as generous than actually want to be generous. Who doesn't want to be known as someone that is generous, right? Don't you want to be known as that generous person? Uh, somebody once, um, uh, once talked about a miser and said, oh, they're terrible to live with, but they're great uh, people to have as uh, inheritors from. Um, people want to be known as generous, but not as many people want to actually be generous. Or maybe I'll phrase it differently. Not as many people believe they can be generous, and so they don't walk through what it, what it all means. When I talk about generosity, and I'm springing off of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, but I'm going to be hitting on places all throughout Scripture. The first thing I want you to see about generosity is pure generosity is as anonymous as possible. That's the first thing I want you to see. Pure generosity is as anonymous as humanly possible. If somebody is generous, in the pure understanding of that word, it is something that is done privately. It is something that is done unconspicuously. It's done so that to outside receivers of the generosity, they would see it as random but it's actually extremely purposeful, and it's anonymous. Jesus talks about when you give, don't give so that people will be blowing trumpets when you come by, as the uh, spiritually elite, the religious did in their time, and they would go and they would uh, have trumpets blow in front of them, like, oh, he's coming to help pay the, give the poor people some money. Oh, let's all stand and clap. He's doing something really good. No, pure generosity wants nothing to do with that. Pure generosity wants to give as anonymously as humanly possible. It works behind the scenes. Secondly, pure generosity exists in someone regardless of their resources. Pure generosity exists in someone regardless of their resources. I believe there's a, a psychological poll out recently that talked about most people say they would feel more comfortable and more secure if they had 10% more. That's what most people say. If I just had 10% more, if I had 10% more time, if I had 10% more energy, if I had 10% more resources, if I had just an extra 10%, then I'd be comfortable. Here's the interesting thing. That exists for people that make under $5,000 a year and for people that make $500,000 a year. Every one of them had that one thing in common. If I just had 10% more, I would be a bit more secure. Generosity exists in people regardless 
of their resources. Pure generosity exists within people regardless of how much they have or how little that they have. Many times we think, oh, I'd like to be generous, but I don't have da-da-da-da-da. No, you don't like to be generous. You either got it or you don't. The other thing I want you to see about pure generosity, a biblical understanding of generosity. A biblical understanding of generosity is by nature, it excludes your DNA. Can I put it? I'll say it another way. It means that when you're generous to your family, that's not generosity. When you are giving to your kids, like, oh, he's so generous. Look what he's doing for his child. I'll put it to you this way. That's not selfless. That's selfish. Pure generosity does not give to your own DNA and say, oh, look how generous I am. Because really, you're giving to yourself in a future generation. You're giving to an image of yourself. You're giving towards something that is bringing reward back to you, right? Or you hope will bring back to you. Or maybe you're trying to buy a love by doing this, by, by being generous to those in your immediate family, maybe up a generation or down a generation or across within your siblings. If you're seeking to just keep what resources God has given you and just keep it within the family, that's not generosity. That's just rearranging the chairs, right? Pure generosity as well. It wells up internally and not externally. Pure generosity comes from inside. As uh, we had Dave speaking here, one of the things that struck me is there's people that want to give, regardless of their resources, but it's something they want to do. It wasn't spurred on by a really nice crafty video. It wasn't spurred on by saying, look at the need. There are plenty of needs in the world. And do people respond to those types of needs? Absolutely. And do those needs need to be uh, exposed out there? Absolutely, because we become blind to them. But pure generosity, generosity, comes from inside looking for places to give already. There is a desire inside to give. It doesn't have to be woken up. It's already existing and ready to go when there's opportunities that it sees it's supposed to. And it comes internally. Somebody that has the gift of generosity is not worried when they see an opportunity. They're not like, ugh, there's another thing to drain. No. Someone with the gift of generosity is like, okay, how can I do this? This is wonderful. People that have that gift, I've sometimes seen take on extra work so they can have more funds to in order to give to things. Think about that. Especially when we're talking about outside of the family. And here's one of the biggest kickers when it comes to pure generosity. Pure generosity cares far less of what the gift is used for than they care about giving of the gift. Right? How many times have we stopped giving because, well, if I give that to them, then they'll just abuse that. Or I want to make sure that that's being used for the proper thing. Or I, I, I want to know where my investment has gone. Okay then call it an investment. Don't call it generosity. Because generosity freely gives. Freely gives. And it can't be freely if you've got a little string attached to it going, yeah, but, 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 I'm just wondering what happened. No. Pure generosity is something that I believe is one of the key strongest indicators of Christ indwelling you. You can fake a whole lot of things in, in Christian circles, but pure generosity just rubs the flesh the wrong way. It wants to, it, it, it doesn't matter how you um, look at it. <laughs> if it's generous, there's going to be an air about it that is not self serving, self focused. It doesn't need a plaque at the bottom of something. It doesn't need 
a mention somewhere else. It doesn't need to be slipped into a conversation. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm, nobody really knew who did that, but that was kind of me. No, pure generosity is just the gift of giving from the heart. And here's why I say it's an indication of Christ indwelling. Because none of us can do that without Jesus making that difference in our life. None of us. There is nothing in us without Christ that is selfless. Without being redeemed by Christ, without being transformed by that relationship that God has in us, there is no way we can do this in our own earthly flesh. Right? However, I will say this. When you ask Christ to come into your life, when you receive that gift of salvation, when you respond to what God has done through Christ and you become a new creation, I want you to hear this. Every Christian in the room, I want you to hear this. You are generous. Because you have in you the Spirit of Christ, right? Christ himself is the most generous in the, in the entire universe. God is a giver. Remember when we pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. God, give to us. And God gives freely. And God gives abundantly. And God gives grace. And God gives things to sinners that don't deserve things. And God gives things to good people that think they do deserve things. And he still gives to them too. God gives to all. God gives. And so you have the God of giving inside of you if you have the Holy Spirit in you. You got that? So every single one of you is generous in the core. But here's where the challenge comes. Remember last week I talked about the different voices that you hear? If you are a believer and I am speaking these words to you and you're reading through there, you're going, oh, yes, I'd like to be like that. But, that terrible three-letter B word. We're going to deal with that terrible three-letter B word right now, that, that word of but. I am not seeking to anybody that is not in a relationship with Christ, this message is not for you to talk about giving or anything like that. And actually, it has nothing to do really with giving. It's having to talk about generosity in your spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, that generous spirit is there. We just need to fan it into flame. Because if you have ever truly experienced generosity as the giver, there is no feeling on this earth that can compare to it. Does anybody know what I mean? When you have fully given something from, from your heart just for the sake of giving, there is a joy that is there. So actually... This message on generosity is a backwards message on joy. Do you want to experience joy? Okay, we're going to look at generosity. And here's a way where you can experience exceedingly abundant joy. Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. And he's talking about a gift going from one set of churches over to another group of Christians that are, are new and setting up. And the first group that's sending this, they have nothing. In the scriptures, if you read through 2 Corinthians 8, verses through, I won't pick up the scripture because I can't see it with my glasses. But it's in there. <laughs> you would see that they had exceedingly nothing. <laughs> they had extreme poverty. Yet, they so willingly sought to experience the joy of giving that they gave in the midst of that. They didn't give from their excess. He didn't go to the Rockefellers and apply to a foundation and they go, oh yeah, here we go. A group that had nothing in extreme poverty wanted the experience of joy. So they gathered together what they could and they sent it off. And as Paul goes on to read, uh, to, to explain to us, as Doug read, as Paul goes on to explain, it's like, 
And they could only give from what they had. And they didn't have much. But still, they found that in their little that they had, they were able to give. And they were able to experience the joy that comes from it. When Dave was, pre- when Dave, and I'll say this word, preaching. When Dave was preaching this morning, I'll, I'll say that because that was a sermon. When Dave was sharing this morning, one of the things I was sitting in the front row and I was watching him, I, was, I could almost hear in my own spirit. So I imagine it's probably existing in yours as well, those voices in your heads going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, I know that story he says, and yeah, you know, $5 in the bank account, and that's okay, I'm going to trust God. Yeah, but that doesn't work all the time, Dave. No, that, that, that doesn't always work. Yeah, but, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, I know that might be your example, but yeah, yeah, but, right? Be careful, because we write off so many things by those voices that come and say, yeah, but that's his experience, that's not mine. First thing I want you to see, the first voice you have to come over in your head is this one. The temporary atheism. I think you had a different word for it, but temporary atheism. Everything in your life, and I'm talking to believers, so if you're not a believer, you can kind of drift back some. You can listen in. And, but if you are a believer, I encourage you, lean in some on this. For every believer, there's things that you go, yes, God, I completely trust you with my health. Yes, God, I completely trust you with my relationships. God, in prayer, I trust you. And I know you're a God that can heal. And I know you're a God that can save. And I give you all of these things. But when it comes to, oh, say this. Oh, but, you know, if I don't watch out for this God, I'm, I'm not going to have anything. You know, I, you know you've, you've got a lot of stuff, but I'll, I'll, I'll take care of this. Right? You have a temporary atheism. We have a one place where we go, God, I believe your word in everything. But, but this God, I, I, I've, I've got some, you know, I've got some good advice of what I'm to do there. Like, and I, I know what I need to do. There was a picture, I may have shared this with you before, it was in a Christian magazine. It was a picture of, uh, a pastor baptizing someone, and all you can see is, is the pastor and has the person underneath, and all you see sticking up from underneath the water is this. <laughs> God, I'll give you everything, but not this. The most interesting verse in Scripture I find, I mean, I find there's powerful, comforting verses in Scripture. I find there's challenging verses in Scripture, but the most interesting verse that I find in Scripture is the one that says, and he walked away sullen because he was a man of great wealth. And that was after Jesus had talked to the rich young ruler and said, here's everything, um, here, I know everything what it means to follow you. He goes, okay, great, go sell all that you have and come follow me. And he walked away sullen for he was a man of great wealth. He was willing to give God everything but this. And I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> If you tell God, I'll give you everything but, guess what the one thing God's going to focus on is? You got it. He's going to go after that one thing that you said, I'll give you everything but. Right? We, We have to be careful with this temporary atheism where, God, I'll give you everything but this. Because this, God, this is big. Like, this is my life. No, actually, breath is your life. And he's given you that. Right? This isn't your life. This is a resource that came from him in the first place. You never made it. Without your help, you wouldn't have had work for it. Without being placed in the country that you're in, you might not have been able to get the resources to have it. It's never been yours. Don't pretend that it is yours. The second thing is that we... um, we temper what we hear God saying to us with our reasoning. We may hear God clearly saying to us, here's what I want you to do, and here's what I encourage for all of you. I want you to take time with God and let him tell you. 
I don't want somebody else to tell you this is what you're to do. Actually, we're, we're told that um, scripturally, when it comes to anything that you're to give, you are to go privately and work it out with the Lord first. Not that it's manipulated by anyone, not because you're giving in response to anything, but it's because of, uh, from generosity, God is leading you to give towards something. You got that? Rather than it being uh, manipulated to you, uh, or, or from you or to you, so that nobody, no sweet talker will be up here selling snake oil, and you go, oh yeah, I want some of that. No. No, it's to be something that you go off aside and you pray and, Lord, show me what is it and where is it. But we deafen God's voice in our lives, especially in this area, because of all our reasons. Yeah, but, you know, I need this much set aside. And what if, you know, what if I need a new roof? And what if, you know, you, you know my kids, God, you know they're going to wreck a car sometime. So, you know, I, I used to jokingly say, well, we've got to save for one's tuition, for the other one's bail. Um, and, and so, you know, you, we have all these plans. Here's what I've got to do. Here's what I've got to do. Here's what I've got to do. And where did that come from? That come from self-preservation, right? We have to just give that over as well. And boy... We are so tempted on the immediate versus the best, right? We're so tempted on having something immediately than something that, that's the best. So, what I would love for you to see, and I'm going to wrap it up now. What I'd love for you to see is, please see that generosity gives an amazing amount of joy. Christ gave... Christ gave his life. And if you read through the scriptures, he didn't give his life because it was the right thing to do. It doesn't even say he gave his life because that was the only way we could come into salvation, although that's true. You see, he gave his life for the abundant joy set before him. That's what you see in scripture. For the joy set before him, he suffered the scorn took the crown, and was crucified for the joy set before him. Somebody that has the Spirit of God inside of them has that same Spirit inside that's saying, there is a joy that you will experience when you give unconditionally from my leading. Jesus wrestled with God, the Father, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right? He wrestled. God, I don't want to do that. God, I don't want to do that. But your will be done, not mine. Many people say that um, the battle was won not at the death of Christ on the cross, not in the resurrection from the grave, but when he stood up from that prayer at Gethsemane. That's when the battle was won. Because then it just went into motion. And he just went and completely gave as God the Father led him to give. And for the joy set before him. Christ said, I have come that you may have joy. You have the spirit of joy inside of you. And the giving is just a symptom of the cause inside, which is generosity. And I'll tell you one other thing that you may um, not remember when your mind goes into self-preservation mode when it comes to your resources. It is amazing to, ha to be able to give and just to feel how it, it is just to give. It's so freeing. But it's also so phenomenal to receive something that was given to you because God directed someone else to give it to you. Uh, I had a chance yesterday to go with Dave again. And we went for a coffee. And, and he said to me, um, do you know that Christmas is a very hard time for people that are over in the mission field? They're not around their family. Typically, they don't have a nice fir tree set up in their living room with garland and stuff around it. And, you know, it's kind of rough. A lot of the places, there, there is spiritual warfare. There's a lot of stuff going on in these places where folks are. 
And you got a Christmas card, church in Alberta. Church in Alberta sent off a Christmas card. A Christmas card, right? Lit them up. That was the right thing at the right time. A Christmas card helped change the trajectory of his holidays, right? We talk about giving. Everyone automatically is going, okay, so I'll do the financial, subtract two, exponential, da da da, right? A card, a phone call, all of the resources God has given you is what I'm talking about when it comes to generosity. All of the resources. And there's some people that pick and choose. And God wants you to be generous in all of them, right? Well, I'll give my time, but not my money. Or I'll give my uh, gifts uh, of, of service, but not these gifts. God just wants you to give everything that he leads you to give selflessly. My guess is the people that were sending this Christmas card to Dave was going, well, this will kind of be nice. This will be a nice thing to do. Having no clue the impact that it has. Every single one of us has the desire to give inside of you. Ask God to awaken that. Ask God to awaken that generosity so that you can experience the joy. We look at generosity and we look at giving as kind of like the scalpel that's cutting, like, oh, this is going to hurt. But boy, it gets out the infection. <laughs> I think that's why God calls all of us to give. A great expression I heard from Pastor Jonathan when I was on sabbatical. He said, rules are for the immature. Like, you need to have rules for the immature, right? Like, don't touch the stove, stop at a stoplight. Rules are for the immature. But what God does in our spirit goes far above the law. It doesn't break the law, it goes far above it. So when I have people saying, Pastor, when it comes to tithing, is it on the um, net or is it on the gross and is it on like the household income or whatever it's like okay you're missing it you're missing it right if you're thinking it's just about the rule and oh i need to do this rule to check off then then your faith is still right up here it's from the heart god will be leading you to do what you're supposed to be doing the biggest thing is you just need to trust that voice inside of you that's telling you to be generous. And here's kind of the general clue. If you want to know what it is, it's probably going to make you uncomfortable. So that's probably what, the, what it is that God's calling you to do. It's going to stretch you. And when it stretches you, it will strengthen you. And I have never met a poor person that has been made poor by giving what God has led them to give. Have you? Never. They may not have a five-story, three-bedroom with multiple vehicles. But I'll tell you one thing. The smile on their face and the joy in their heart, no money can buy. You want that? Just listen to what God is saying inside of you, Christians. And for those of you that haven't accepted Christ and you want to experience the joy, it starts in that relationship with Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. You have never held back. You have given abundantly. God, you have outgiven anyone and everything. What more could you give? For you loved us so much, you gave your son so that we could be saved. Father, help us to experience that eternal life even now. Help us to experience the fullness of our Christian walk now. I know that voice is in us because you are in us. Your spirit is in us, filling us. So Lord, break through. And Lord, help us to listen and weed out the lies and weed out the self-preservation and weed out all those things that get in the way of what you are telling us. And Lord, I pray this one thing for every person that's gathered here. That they would hear your voice come through in their hearts. That they wouldn't be basing anything on what this next book says or what, what the pastor says. But Lord, through you, through your spirit, well up inside of them, 
and free them from the bondage, the self-bondage they've placed themselves in by trapping your generous spirit from coming out of, their, out of, out of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.